All right, so we're going to talk about how you find uh, the equation of a line that just goes through any two points that are on that line. Um, <clears throat> so remember one of the things you need to remember about, uh, I guess, you know, when you were proving a point is on a line, you literally plugged it into the equation you were given, and if it made a true statement, then that point was on the line. So remember that you can still plug the coordinates of a point into an equation. And that's an important idea because um, that's kind of what I'm going to do um, in this video. So basically, there's going to be uh, two ways you can essentially do this that I'm going to show for this video. And we're going to look at y equals mx plus b versus uh, y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1. Now, this is the point slope uh, formula, and this is the uh, slope intercept formula. So we're going to talk about those two video, uh, those two equations, and we're basically just going to say, okay, these are just unique equations to linear functions. So what we're going to do is just going to go through and figure out, okay, if I have a point, if I have a line that passes through the point 8, 4, and 27, how do I calculate it? So here we go. First things first, notice in both of these equations, similarities are they both have m okay so if i give to you two points you can determine a line's rate of change if i know that those points are on that line well the i didn't write out a whole problem here but i'm going to tell you that we're looking for a line passing through 8 4 and 27 so therefore i know that these points are on the same line so i need to find the rate of change now there's many ways you can do it i just prefer to use delta y over delta x so i look at what's the change in the y's and then i look at what's the change to the x uh, in the x's so there's many ways you can do this. I generally make a table. So for us, I'm going to make the table here. So uh, I make this table. So my table is uh, an XY table, and I literally just plug my coordinates in. So my coordinates are 8, 4, 27. So then I just have to look at and observe what is the difference between the X's and what's the difference between the Y's. So it's a quick little calculation. So the calculation from 4 to 7 is plus 3, and then from 8 to 20 is plus 12. So now I just need to make sure that I utilize the ratio because slope is just a uh, growth ratio. So we make a ratio in fraction form. So the ratio that I have is the change in Y's over my change in x's and you always know changes because I put pluses you know putting a plus super signifies my change or subtraction shows uh, that I'm subtracting I'm changing that value somehow some way that's the change 4 to 7 is a change of plus 3 8 to 20 is a change of plus 12 so m I'm just going to record this off to the side up here for me to use later okay so I now know that m is going to be equivalent to 3 over 12 okay now, I can reduce this, and that reduces to 1 fourth. So I'm going to write this as 1 fourth. So 3 over 12 reduces to 1 over 4 because 3 is divisible by 3 and 12 is divisible by 3. So what I get here is that this okay, is the almighty key. Okay? To calculate the equation of any line, you must use the rate of change, especially if I have points. Okay, they're out in the middle of nowhere. The goal is to get back to when x is 0. So what this means is that every y coordinate changes one value whenever I change the m for four values. So for this particular one, there are many ways I could do it. All I'm trying to do is get back to zero. Okay, so I can use my rate of change if I want to get back to zero to write the equation of this line because that's how I calculate b. So if I want, if I go back to zero, okay, from zero to eight is plus eight, okay. Well, this number here, I don't, I don't know it. But I do know, okay, I do know that if my m is 1 fourth, that this rate of change, whatever this value is here, okay, is going to be equivalent to something over 8. So to figure out what this number is, okay, so just one way, this is one way, so we're going to do three different ways here. All right, so one way is to go, okay, 4 times what made 8? Well, that's times 2, so this is a times 2. So that's 2. So I write plus 8 goes with a plus 2. So this number here had to have been 2. All right. So if this was confusing to you, everything I went through just using rates of change to get back to 0, I now know that my initial value is 2. All right. So I now know in this problem that b equals 2. So I have everything I now need to write the equation of the line. And the equation of the line is y equals 1 fourth x plus 2. 
So we're going to come back to that in a minute. So this is y equals 1 fourth x plus 2. So if this was confusing to you, you didn't know how to do it, well, that's what we have formulas for to help us go through this. They're going to do essentially the same thing, except it gives me a process to follow as opposed to all the extra, um, you know, th the abstract thinking that goes on with, with this. So here we go. So first things first, if you notice both of these equations, so I'm going to work with this one first, and then I'm going to go to this one, all right? So if I want to find the equation of a line, first things first, okay, to solve, to, to isolate any variable that I don't know what it is, I have to make an equation with simply one variable if I want to isolate a variable to figure out its value. So in the slope intercept form one, okay, the problem is, is that I don't know the initial value. That's what I need to figure out. I know what a y and an x is because I give you plenty of x's and y's. Okay, I give you x here, y here, x here, y here. So I give you plenty of pairs to plug into here. Okay, we've calculated m, so I just need to figure out b. So when you do the slope intercept form, all right, to figure this out, we simply plug in the value after I calculate my m. So for this one, it changes to pick any x, okay, with its y. So if I pick 8, I have to use 4. If I pick 20, I have to use 7. I can't mix and match here because they're pairs. So if I replace y with 7, that means I'm going to replace that x with a 20. So my m, replace it with what I calculated it to be. It's 1 fourth, so that's 1 fourth. The x, replace it with its, okay, its pair is 20. All right. Now I want to solve for b, so that's what I'm calculating. That's the thing I don't know in this particular problem, is the b. But I have plenty of x's, and I've calculated that m. So to figure out the b, I just simply solve for b now like I would any equation. So 7 is now equivalent to 1 fourth times 20 is 5 plus b. All right. And notice before that we ended up with 2, so this is just a way of calculating. So minus 5 from both sides, I get b is equivalent to 2. So this is, again, when we had the table, that's when 0, when x is 0, the y will be uh, 2. So now I've got b. Now remember, you need to make the equation. So the important part is, is we just calculated b. We have m. So we have m. Now we have b. So the equation is 1 fourth x plus 2. Now, these two, the way that I've done so far, require you to go back to y equals mx plus b. Now, we do also have this thing called the point-slope formula. Literally, you can plug in to where it signifies that you need to plug in for. So the things that I need to plug in for in this particular equation are going to be y1 is going to be m, and it is going to be x1. So what this formula does is, is it, some people like this one because it allows you to signify exactly what coordinates you need to plug in for. You always need to change your, you always need to plug in for m. But the y, this also gives me a little indicator that that's the y I need to plug in for. After I plug in for them, I just go ahead and solve for y. So I'll show you with this formula as well. So for this one, okay, we go through after the m has been calculated. So again, you still have to calculate the m. You still got to calculate the slope. So I go ahead and I'm just going to plug it in. Now, so I change that to 1 fourth, parentheses. This x doesn't get substituted in for because it's not marked with a subscript that I need to plug it in for. So it becomes x, I write my minus, and then in that box I'm going to place just an x coordinate. Now, if whatever x coordinate I pick, I must choose its pair for a y. So therefore, if we come up here and I use 20, then I got to use the 7. Again, if I use the 8, I got to use the 4. So for this problem, I'm just going to use the 8 and the 4 just because. So x, I'm going to make it an 8. Okay. The y, so it's y minus, so now y1, all right, is going to be 4, all right? So just remember that whenever you substitute in for the variable, I like to put in parentheses, um, just to, in case this is a negative, then two negatives would change that operation to a positive. So uh, for this particular one, don't worry about it, but that needs to happen. So here we go. All I now have to do is rearrange this so it says y equals. So I do my distributive property here. So it says y minus 4 equals. We'll distribute. So I get 1 fourth x minus. So 1 fourth times negative 8 is a negative 2. All right. Now the thing is, is notice it doesn't say y equals. So we must take this negative 4, throw it on the other side. It becomes a positive 4. All right. So now I've got y equals 1 fourth x plus 2. The nice thing that some people, like I said, like about this point-slope formula is that it's going to give you the equation right away. So you have basically y equals mx plus b, 
but either way you still need to plug in for the x coordinate and the y coordinate their pairs whether you use the y equals mx plus b or whether you use the point slope formula